Hi, welcome back to the second last episode of this rendering tutorial series. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to how to do a render setup. So we're going to add a camera with all the effects that a camera might have. We're going to add a ground plane or at least texture this ground plane so it looks semi-realistic. And we're also just going to manipulate this background a little bit so I can get a more interesting background. Um, so yep, first of all, let's just add a camera, press shift A and then add a camera. Get a nice view in your viewport and then just hit control, alt and number pad zero. Again, if you don't have a number pad, go under view, align view and align active camera to view. That's going to put the camera um, where you're looking and we can just move this around. So click the edge of the frame, which is just the camera. Press G to move it around. You can hold shift to do it a bit more smoothly. Um, you can press G and press Z twice to push in and out as well. Yep, so we'll just frame the car nicely. Um, and then what we're going to do, I'm just going to move back to the layout tab just so we can see this a little bit better. Press numpad zero or just this button right here to go to the camera view. Um, and we'll also go into rendered mode. What we're going to do is add some depth of field. So under our camera settings, if you have the camera selected, just this green camera in the bottom right, um, and you can tick depth of field. Now there's going to be way too much depth of field, so I'm just going to, um, first of all, we'll just set the distance of the car from the camera. Um, now that's quite finicky, so what I'm going to do is actually just press this eyedropper tool here, um, and then just click on the car. That's, that is focusing on the back of the car for some reason, and the reason for that is because the origin of the car, or the what the what Blender thinks is the center point of the car, is actually right at the back. Um, so if I were to rotate it, you can see it's ro it rotates around the back of the car. I wanted to change that to the center, so if I have the car selected, right click, set origin, and then origin to geometry, that'll just chuck it right in the middle. Um, still way too blurry. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is change the f-stop, change it to around five. Let's change the f-stop of the lens. So the f-stop of the lens is the aperture of the lens. It's the size of the little hole inside the lens. Obviously, this is all simulated, so you can have an aperture of zero um, or 0.1, whatever. This is very uncommon. I don't think anyone would ever want a lens that looks like this um, in real life but you can simulate it. <laughs> um, we're going to turn it up till we get like a decent depth of field. Um, still so the front of the car is a little bit out of focus, um, but not as much as it was before. So yeah, about 10 looks good for this car. Um, also, you can change the focal length. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is go to the, under the camera settings here, we're going to change the sensor size to a bit worse of a camera. So I think 16 millimeters would be good. Um, and you can see that's zoomed in in heaps, so we're just going to change the focal length down to what looks good, about 20, 23, and there you go. Um, now, I am very disinterested in the background of this image. Um, I think it's just a little weird window. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to the shading tab. And instead of shading an object, we're going to change from object to world. And if I just press A and um, frame selected, you can see what we've got in our world right now is, is our background and that strength that we had there and then our environment texture that we added. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just try and rotate this so we can get the view down the bridge there. Um, so what we're going to do is edit preferences, add-ons, and go search up um, Node Wrangler. Um, make sure that's ticked and save your preferences. And what that's going to do is just give us a few shortcuts for the nodes. Um, so I can just have this, I'll just click on this uh, texture here, press Control T, and that's going to add a mapping node. And what we can do with this mapping node is just use our Z rotation. We can spin around this background until we like it. There we go. Um, now the last thing, just this ground plane here. 
Um, what we're going to do is, if I just switch back to the object tabs, I'm going to add, I'm going to click on it and add a new material. And I'll just name this. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to add what's called a PBR texture. Um, it's just a texture with a, with a bunch of different maps that allow us to get nice detail out of it. Um, so that website that we were on before, Polyhaven, um, they have HDRIs, but they also have textures. Um, so you can go and pick a texture, I like this worn table texture. Just click download, and then you'll have to unzip the file. And there you go, you'll get a bunch of textures here. Um, and we're just going to add each of these. So press Shift A under texture, image texture, and then just open your open your texture. So you got diffuse, which is the um, base color. Just plug that straight into the base color. There you go, we've got the color. So just duplicate that box and click on the open file again. We've got displacement, normal, and we've got roughness. Um, so this displacement texture, it goes into this displacement here. Um, and what we're gonna do is just add a displacement node. So press Shift A, search displacement, and just chuck that in between. Make sure that's plugged into the height. And we'll just turn the scale all the way down. So there you go. And we've got our normal. We're going to plug that into, so just press Shift A and search. We're going to plug that into a normal map. I'll just plug the color into the color and then normal into the normal, the, this node here. And then again, just turn the strength down a little bit. And we've got our roughness, which we'll plug straight into our roughness tab here. And I don't quite like how rough that is. Um, there's no reflection to it at all. It doesn't look very interesting. So what I'm going to do is actually invert this roughness. So just add a new node, called invert node, chuck that in between, and there you go. That's made it nice and shiny. And I can just change this factor a little bit so I can make it less shiny. And I think that's about good there. Just a few touch-ups. I'm just going to make this the strength of our background a little bit less just because I don't like how much it's overpowering. Um, the car, I think that wing needs to be lit up a little bit more so I'm going to select this light right here and I'm going to go under the uh, light properties and just turn its strength up a little bit. There we go. And also our backlight, I'm just going to press G to move it a little bit to the right, just so we're getting that rear wing lit up a little bit more. I'm just playing around with the details, make sure it looks nice for your car, and yep, that'll do for this episode, and next episode I'll be showing you how to actually render the car.